In order to get you up to speed and familiarized with your new scoreboard and keyboard, the Scoreboard Service Company has created this short video to help you understand how to operate your keyboard and to customize features to meet your specific needs. Let's begin by familiarizing you with the areas of the keyboard. On the top left part of the keyboard, you have an on-off switch for powering the keyboard on or off. You have an LCD display allowing you to see on the keyboard what the scoreboard is displaying. You have home and guest game inserts on the keyboard. You have a numeric keypad for entering the specific numerals for each sport. You have a sport specific insert to adjust various scoring functions. Along the top you have a switch for starting and stopping the clock. Next to the LCD display screen there are three yellow buttons one for setting the clock, one for timeouts, and one for manually activating the horn. The three removable game inserts on the keyboard allow you to change and control various sports with a single keyboard controller. Your keyboard comes with a full set of inserts for either indoor sports or outdoor sports scoring. Many keyboard functions are similar across a variety of sports scoring situations. We will use American high school basketball settings as the default for this tutorial. Be sure you have the basketball inserts inserted into the insert holders. Home score is always on the left of the keypad, yes score is right of the keypad, and the sport function insert is located on the far right of the keyboard below the clock start and stop button. Let's begin by turning on the power to the scoreboard and the controller. Next, we will configure the options menu settings on your keyboard controller for your specific sport requirements. The option menu consists of about 25 setting options for customizing your scoreboard and controller. Some of the features we will discuss are option settings that may not be available on your scoring equipment. Simply skip any options menu feature which does not apply to your scoreboard or controller. Enter the options menu on the controller by pressing the reset key and then pressing the options key on the keyboard controller. The LCD display will read, select option, select game. Now press enter. Use the arrow keys to select the sport you will be scoring. We will choose basketball for this tutorial. Now press enter. The next screen to appear on the screen options display is set time of day clock. Press enter if you wish to display the time of day in the timer portion of your scoreboard. Use the keypad to set the time of day, then press enter. Use the arrow keys to scroll to the default game time screen. Press Enter. Use the arrow keys to select the preset game time you wish to use for your game. There are two preset times stored in the keyboard memory, Time 1 and Time 2. Select either time as the default game time by scrolling to it and then pressing Enter. Every time you start a new game, this preset game time will be the default game time for each period. At the Set Game Time Option menu screen, you can specify the exact time you desire for each period. This allows you to change the default game time you selected in Step 1. Use the numeric keypad to enter the minutes you require for the period, then press Enter. For example, to enter 10 minutes, press 1, 0, 0, 0, to make the default periods 10 minutes in length. Now press enter. The next option menu screen displays tenths of seconds enable. The default factory setting is on. Press enter to change the tenths of seconds display from on to off. If you do not wish to see the tenths of seconds displayed when the game time reaches 59 seconds or less. Now press enter. The next option screen allows you to choose to sound the horn automatically at the end of every period. Press enter. Use the arrow keys to turn the automatic horn function on or off as needed. The next options menu screen is set shot clock. Press enter and use the keypad to set the correct time for your shot clocks for your game. Press enter. 
The Timeout Clock option screen is next. Press Enter. Use the numeric keypad to adjust the length of each of the timeouts in your game. Press Enter. The Timeout Clock 2 feature is the next menu item on the option screen. You may program a second timeout clock time if you wish to have several timeout timers for your game. Use the numeric keypad to type in the time and then press Enter. The option screen will now read Timeout Display. Use the arrow keys to scroll to on or off to allow the scoreboard to display the timeout countdown in the game time display. Turn this feature off to display the timeout countdown on the keyboard controller, not on the scoreboard. When this feature is set to on, the timeout timer is displayed on the scoreboard and keyboard controller. Having the timeout timer running in the game time display on the scoreboard can confuse fans and officials when the game time is under one minute. Many scoreboards have this feature turned off by default. Press Enter. Next you will see the Timeout Alarm option screen. Press Enter, then use the arrow keys to toggle between on or off. This feature enables the horn to sound at the end of the timeout period. The factory default setting for this feature is on. Press Enter. The timeout warning is the next programmable feature in the options menu. Press Enter. Use the arrow keys to either turn on or off the pre-programmed timeout warning alarm, which sounds when there is 15 seconds left in the timeout. Press Enter. Next is the period's game menu. Press Enter. Use the numeric keypad to select the number of periods you have for your game. Press Enter. The Reset Fouls option menu is next. This function resets the team fouls at halftime and is usually set to on. Press Enter. The next screen is the Player Points options menu. If your scoreboard displays points, players, and fouls, turn this feature on. If your scoreboard does not display points, players, and fouls, set this feature to the off setting. Team Fouls is the next option menu on the display. This feature is usually set to on unless your scoreboard does not display Team Fouls. Max Team Fouls is next. This feature should be set to 10. This is the standard setting for most games. Use the numeric keypad to change the number to match your specific needs. Now press Enter. Bonus Tracking is the next options menu setting. You may automatically track the bonus by using the Track Bonus setting or Track Double Bonus by selecting this setting if your scoreboard displays the double bonus. You may also select to manually track the bonus or the double bonus settings. Press Enter. Bonus Fouls is the next options menu selectable feature. This feature is preset at the factory for 7 team fouls and 10 double bonus fouls. This is the standard settings for U.S. high schools and colleges. You may change this numerical value as needed. Press Enter. Player Fouls is the next options menu setting. You may either turn this on or off. If your scoreboard displays player fouls, this feature should be turned on. Select Off if your scoreboard does not display player fouls. Now press Enter. If you have backboard lights on the basketball backboards at your facility, you can choose to have them turn on at the end of every period when the time runs out. Press Enter and then scroll to On with the arrow keys. Select Off if you do not have backboard lights at your facility or you do not want them to light up at the end of every period. Press Enter. If you have shot clocks at your facility, you can choose to activate the backboard lights when the shot clock runs down to zero. Press Enter and then use the arrow keys to select either on or off for this feature. Now press Enter. You may choose to sound the horn automatically when the backboard lights flash. Press Enter. Then scroll to on or off as needed. Now press Enter. 
backboard light strobe lights are a selectable feature on your scoreboard. Press enter, then use the arrow keys to select one of the four strobe light settings for the backboard lights. Press enter. To brighten or dim the entire scoreboard display, use the set brightness option menu. Press enter, and then scroll to the setting which best suits your facility. The scoreboard comes from the factory preset at 10 for the brightness setting. Press enter. The next option menu setting is set backlight. This allows a backlight to be either on or off on your LCD display on the controller. The final screen in the options menu is the product authorization menu. You should not need to use this menu unless a scoreboard service technician instructs you to do so. Now press the Options key to return you to the scoring display screen on your controller. You are now ready to use your scoring equipment at your facility. If you have any questions, please call the Scoreboard Service Company at 1-800-411-3136.